Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to look at a few different players who need to have a big year in 2024 to keep their hobby prices up. All right, so every year I like to do these where I'll look at players I think are undervalued heading into the season, and then not that these players are overvalued in this video, but just rather they need to have a good year to continue their cards having a specific demand and value in the hobby, and their cards could be in trouble. So let's just jump into this. The very first person, I'm not going to show you who he is yet, but I want to show you what they were doing through their age 28th season. Through their age 28th season, they had 151 home runs, they had an OPS plus of 144, they had 37.7 war, so basically a 40 war guy with 151 home runs. He had an MVP, actually had four top five MVP finishes from his age 24 to age 28 season. He was an all-star, right? He was one of those players that was probably a top five player collected in baseball for at least five or six years. And then after his age 28 season, he turned into not a great ball player. He was about league average offensively, a 111 OPS, a far cry from the 144 OPS it was prior with a 781 OPS versus an 884 OPS. On top of that, he does have about the same amount of home runs with 148 versus 151, but everything else is down. Batting average is down 50 points, striking out more. His war is only 10.9 in this seven year season span. And overall, he kind of fell off the Hall of Fame track or he's not quite pacing as a rate he would like to. And that is Andrew McCutcheon. So Andrew McCutcheon is a player who started out extremely hot in Pittsburgh. We can see one, two, three, four, top five MVP finishes with an MVP through his age 28 season. And then he just wasn't great. His best season since was when he was 30 years old with a 123 OPS. He's actually having a pretty good year at the Philadelphia Phillies. He tore his ACL on a Gene Segura infield pop-up that Segura didn't run out. So he got caught up in a rundown and actually tore his ACL. But he's having a good year that year. And ever since then, not been the same player. Understandable, we age, we all get older. I'm getting older, I can feel it. But we can see he's not quite on a Hall of Fame track right now. 48.6 career war, 52.1 F war, slightly different equations, but pretty close overall, and 299 home runs. So Andrew McCutcheon seemed like he's on a clear Hall of Fame path, and now it's not quite so certain. And so I'm just saying he needs to have another couple years of two to three war seasons. If he can do that and go out being above average at the three war season, that's what's going to help him get to the Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, he has not had a three war season since when was this? Since he was 30 or 31. So maybe a little bit too late for Andrew McCutcheon, but a very interesting player to look at. And there really is an opportunity if he can age well. People love him. He still has a Hall of Fame shot if he can do other things. But right now, I wouldn't really bank on it. The next player is Cody Bellinger. And this is an interesting player because he has some of the best peaks possible, right? He rookie of the year. He won rookie of the year in 2017 with 39 home runs, broke the rookie home run record that year before Pete Alonso then broke it, I believe, in 2020 or 2019, 2019. And so overall, Bellinger was coming out the gate hot. He had a step back his sophomore season with a 120 OPS plus the 25 home runs, and then a big leap forward with a 167 OPS, 305 batting average, 47 home runs, won the MVP, the gold glove, the silver slugger. He looked great in the postseason. And then he did this weird thing where he jumped up and hit shoulders with the player after a home run in the postseason, dislocated his shoulder. was never really the same player since. And then this last year was kind of a renaissance of sorts where he actually had a really solid season, an 881 OPS, a 307 batting average. He had 26 home runs. He finished top 10 in the MVP voting. But overall, he was still only a 133 OPS plus guy, which is good. That's really good, but it's not MVP caliber. And he only had 4.4 war. So if you look at the advanced metrics, which we're not going to do too much in this video, there's a lot of things to be concerned about this last year with his offensive profile, and that some of it may have been luck. But overall, he did not get a massive contract like he was seeking, probably because in 2020, 21, and 2022, he was one of the worst hitters in Major League Baseball. And that's concerning, especially after one bounce back year. I think if he can have another bounce back year this year, that's when we're going to see his stock rise again. But only 27, 22 war through his age 27 season, that's still really good and we can see the potential. So he's a player that's very intriguing from a card collecting perspective and one you should watch this year. If he has a seven war season, which he's done once, but if he has a seven war season up to almost 30 war through his age 28 season, it's intriguing. Intriguing, it's dangerous, but intriguing. Here are his projections. This is from fan graphs. They are not very high on him. Projecting 2.8 war, 2.3 war, and 2.3 worth only 19, 18, and 17 home runs, respectively, over the next three years. So, overall, not great, but that's what we're seeing with Cody Bellinger. The next one, Young Stars. 
always pan out, right? These hot players, they come into the league and are amazing. They always do well. Let's look at an example. This is a player who was rookie of the year. He had, you know, really solid season, 26 home runs with a 135 OPS plus. The next year wins MVP. He has a 292 batting average with 39 home runs, a 146 OPS plus. The next year, right, he's top seven MVP finisher again with another 5.7 war, 142 OPS plus, 295 batting average with 29 home runs. And then what happens? It was Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant is who this was about. People were actually saying Chris Bryant is as good as Mike Trout. Who should I buy? Chris Bryant, Bryce Harper, Mike Trout. All these things were happening in 2016. There was the big debate about who's going to have the better career, Bryant or Arnado. We saw how that played out. And unfortunately, the Rockies, this is more of me just venting than anything else. I don't know if he'll ever, if really even have value again. We'll talk about that. But here's Chris Bryant now, right? So you can see those amazing few seasons at the beginning of his career. And then he's not been the same guy. He's consistently injured with back problems. And ever since he went to the Rockies, he has even been just worse. He's just not been good. His last two seasons with the Rockies have been horrible. He's had a total of 15 home runs playing for Colorado. Only played about 120 games the last two years. And so far this year, it's not been better. I want to show this real quick. This is this year. It's only been three games. I'm recording this on Monday. And you can see he has been 0 for 10 with seven strikeouts so far. So this is who he is now. It's going to be really tough. He could be going down as one of the worst contracts in Major League Baseball history, potentially. But hopefully he can bounce back and get back to who he was. But other than that, like here are his batting stats again for the Rockies the last few years. 93 OPS plus guy, 15 home runs in two seasons. And his home and away splits make no sense because he's better on the road. He hasn't played very many games, but this was from this past year. Better on the road. It, it's just been an interesting situation. But here is an example of how buying some of these young hype prospects can be difficult and can really kill you value-wise. And everybody knows this. But we can see right here he had his Bowman Crump Super Factor go for $111,000. And then two years later went for sixty two thousand dollars and then in 2023 went for nineteen thousand dollars and i'd have to imagine if it went up for sale again it would probably be less than ten thousand dollars at this point i can't say for certain but i can't imagine any cubs fan is really wanting that card that badly maybe there are a few who are just like you know what helped us break the curse for the world series back in the late 2010s and mid 2010s so yeah i do want his cards but it's just sad to see what's happened to chris bryant and it's sad for me as a Rockies fan watching Chris Bryant. All right, and the last player I want to discuss is going to be Corey Seager. And you might be saying this is not someone who's struggling. That's true, but he's someone who's been injured or just kind of underperformed for majority of his career. Like, right, we can see he had a 95 games played, 52 games played, 26 games played. And even this last year, 119 games played. But we can see he was MVP runner-up and would have won the MVP if it wasn't for Shohei Otani. And so he's been really good. And overall, I think there's a real world where Corey Seager's values do increase, especially as he can prove he can stay healthy. Two World Series MVPs, you have to talk about that with Corey Seager. Postseason stats usually don't hurt your cards, but they can definitely help your cards. And that's the case for Corey Seager right now. And if he can stay healthy and have another one dot OPS like he did this past year, he's not really been that type of player. Honestly, even his first year at Texas, who's a 117 OPS plus guy at the 772 OPS, it's going to really help his values. But a shortstop who's hitting 33 home runs, which he's done the last two seasons, with a OPS plus average of 134. And if he can just stay healthy, that's like a Hall of Fame caliber player. But it might just be too little too late as he enters his age 30 season. We can compare him to other Hall of Famers. We can see Troy Tulowitzki is one of his best comps. Actually, is his most similar batter through his age 29 season. Then Trevor Story, Miguel Tejada, Trey Turner. There's not really a Hall of Fame comparison here, which is unfortunate. But the similar batters are also a lot of players who have had good years and also some not so great years. So Corey Seager is interesting because, again, if he only has two more big seasons, then these prices right here that we're going to be looking at Right, his gold Bowman chromatograph has consistently gone for about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars in the last six months. That's when that card can go way up. There's actually other players like Corbin Carroll, all these other players whose Bowman chromatographs go for significantly more. Right, Aaron Judge, we're looking at fifteen thousand dollars. Mookie Betts is about twelve thousand dollars. Bryce Harper is like twenty thousand dollars, and so forth. Acuna and Soto are in the twenties to thirties, and so there's a chance like. If he can just stay healthy, if he can prove in the regular season, he has the postseason resume, he seems to get to around 55 to 60 war, and that's when the Hall of Fame path is there and people are going to really collect his cards. So that's Corey Seager. That's my last player. He's someone I'm interested in watching this year. He started out uh, with a sports hernia and missed a lot of spring training. He is playing already, though, which is great. So there's a chance that he can have a full season. We'll have to see how it goes. But those are the players that I'm interested in watching this particular season. Here are the projections from Zips the next three years. 
about five war season, four war season, and a four war season. So we're looking at what is this? It's like 15 war for the next three years. If that does happen, that's going to put him at 46 war for his career through his age 33 season. Who knows? There's a, there might be something there. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of these players. And other than that, I will see you in the next video.